All right, y'all, I had to reconnect you to the Wi-Fi because I just re realized it was pixelating a little bit. So I was watching the people come in and come out. But I renamed the live. I'm going to name this one What's Beef? Because I feel like a lot of us be creating beefs with our favorite, you know, celebrities and singers and rappers and things. These two people might even have a lot of love for each other. But because we feel like someone is getting slighted or not getting a bigger piece of the pie, we're going to compare them to something that has nothing to even do with you and me. Let's start off with Erica Badu and Beyonce. Okay, Erica noticed that Beyonce may have worn an outfit or two that's remotely close to some shit she'd have worn on tour. Erica goes, hmm, or that's nice, or flattering. And we automatically deem it as a beef, like Erica want to see Beyonce and yank her braids out. I don't think that's what it means necessarily. Sometimes people just notice like, hey, I just did that. Looks good on you too. And I think that we are so used to if someone calls someone out on something and say, hey, that looked like something I would have done. Or, hey, B, I would have done. We want them to fight. Like, we want bag lady and single ladies to get right in the ring and just pull each other braids out. I don't think that that's what it always is. And also, it's happening right now with the Miley Cyrus versus Raven Simone thing. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've been seeing on the internet lately. A lot of people have been trying to compare what Miley Cyrus do. Um to what Raven Simone has done as far as to Disney. Now, a lot of y'all have been watching it just like me. I love the Disney Channel. I grew up as a Disney kid. I watched That's So Raven. I also watched the Hannah Montana show. Um, do I agree that the Hannah Montana show had a lot more um, viewers than That's So Raven? Sure. Now, in our urban community, That's So Raven was popular. Raven was also popular around the world. But I do think that after Disney, their careers kind of split. Now, we're feeling like, well, Raven got the bad end of the split, you know, because black people don't never thrive at the Disney. There's been lots of black people that thrived on Disney. That's Tia and Tamara. Um, Raven still got a spinoff of her show. There's the little boy who played our brother, Corey. I think he had like a spinoff, like keeping up with Corey or some shit like that. There's been a lot of people. I think what is apparent is that Miley Cyrus has a bigger career than Raven Simone. But let's look at after Disney. Miley went on to sell many a records. I don't know if y'all remember, but people was really, really buying into Miley Cyrus as Miley outside of Hannah Montana. So they set her up kind of like the Jamie Foxx show. Do y'all remember the Jamie Foxx show where Jamie we have a lot of little funny, you know, episodes, but every once in a while you see Jamie at the piano playing or singing at someone's bridal shower or birthday party. So we knew that Jamie was trying to split off, not just from what we know as an actor or a comedic actor, but we also knew that he had some vocals back there. Now I'm not going to say that Raven didn't ever sing with Cheetah Girls or Raven didn't ever do a little hip hop one, two step on that. So Raven, but it was not to the magnitude of what Miley done. Okay. Molly made us believe that there was a difference between Hannah Montana and Miley fucking Cyrus. When we're watching that, so Raven, and your name is already Raven, and we're watching Raven be a psychic, let alone a schoolgirl and a singer, it's hard to depict which one is going to be, you know what I'm saying, the biggest. Now, do I agree that Miley comes from a singing background? Sure. Everyone knows her father, Billy Ray Cyrus. So does that may have like some light that's shining on Miley's career? I can agree to that. But that doesn't negate the fact that Raven, too, was trying to build a music career. It is not our fault as fans whose music we're going to take more seriously. I can be honest, I'm a huge Raven Simone fan. I love that so Raven, loved Olivia and the Cosby's, loved her uh, inclusion in uh, the Dr. Doolittle franchise, one, two, three, four, and all the, you know, sequels, prequels, and everything else that came with that. Um, not a fan of Raven's vocals, not a fan of Raven's music. And I feel like in this world, we have been taught to, if you don't love everything that someone's do in their entirety, then you're not a fan of them. I am a fan of Raven. I am a fan of the nostalgicness that Raven makes me feel when I see her grace my TV screen. I'm like, well, that goes, that's so Raven. It's to the point now where I don't even call her Raven Simone. I call her That's So Raven. I'm like, look at That's So Raven starring in a movie that ain't got nothing to do with That's So Raven. But I love Raven. I do not want to buy Raven's album. Is that a problem? 
Is that a problem? And you know people get upset with that. Like, you know, how can you be black and say, it's not about color when it comes to music. And I think that's what Beyonce is trying to get us to understand now. Music in a genre has no, it, it has no color. You can be black and sing country. You can be white and sing R&B. You can be white and have soul. You can be Hispanic and do hip hop dance and then nothing, it, it, it has no, you know, no race, no origin behind it. It all comes down to, are you good at it or not? Raven is a great actress, comedic actress. She's good on that, so Raven, but I heard Raven in Cheetah Girls. I never bought a Cheetah Girl album. Now, did I buy them two little hoes? Who, what was that group? Shri Lil Whore, Shri Lil, uh, Shri LW, Shri Lil Women, whatever. I bought Shri LW album. When you treat me like a daily and you open doors and doors and then you go in front because you with your boy. I bought the album with the list. I was like, ooh, that's a crisp list on this. Hey, yo, you promised me a case stay, but that was last year, boy, in the eighth grade. I bought the eighth grade. I bought, you know, Beats by Tyson, you know, now Kiss. But I did not buy Cheetah Girls. I just felt like I'm too grown. And even though I was a child when Cheetah Girls came out, even then I felt like I was, I'm too grown to be standing in line for some puss ass Cheetah Girls. And I'm gonna be real, bitch. I just felt like that's not no shit. I could have came to my mom and been like, can you get me a Cheetah Girls album for Christmas? And not that my mom would have discriminated because she had already bought me a Destiny's Child, a Shri LW, and, and an In Vogue CD. So she would have got me a Cheetah Girls. But I just felt like that's, you know, that's crossing the line. How do you come out to your mother without coming out to your mother? Like, mom, get me a Cheetah Girls, especially after she just bought a Spice Girls. Now, you got to choose ye this day which girl you going to be. You're going to growl, you're going to add a little seasoning. You're going to be a spice, you're going to be a cheater. I'm more of a spice girl. I'm more of a tell me what you want, what you really, really want, then we are sisters to stand together. I'm not a cheater bitch myself. And that's no offense to Raven. It's not. It's just that when people are switching over from comedy to music or from, I don't know, sports to music or I don't know, from being a chef to a musician, we got to feel you on that level. It has nothing to do with your color. It has nothing to do with your color. I remember Shaquille O'Neal was dropping a rap CD. I said, who is this? Yeah, you know, across the up, Mr. Free Throw. <laughs> Everybody want to be me. He was too heavy on the beat for my life. And I said, is this Shaq? Is this number 22? Is, th is this Kobe's best friend? When I'm asking, is this that tall ass basketball player with the gold and purple on? That means I have no, no, no interest at all in your music. <laughs> okay? And that didn't just happen with Raven. That didn't just happen with Shaq. That happened with Dennis fucking Robin. You remember Dennis had confused us so much. He had a wedding dress on with some Jordans on and some Nike socks and a damn train from the veil up there doing rap music. I said, what is this? What's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? And when we are watching these things, if we don't feel you and your music in its entirety, then I look at it like this. We're not going to buy your album. Even down to Eddie Murphy. I love Eddie Murphy. Everyone knows this. Like, Eddie Murphy is probably one of my favorite comics. And I'm not saying that just because I'm into comedy. I'm saying that because... Eddie is what made me want to do comedy. You know, the look, the style. Eddie made me want to do comedy. Eddie didn't make me want to be an R&B vocalist. I remember party all the time. Party all the time. And as... Uh, I, <laughs> Tyra Banks... You remember Tyra had America's Next Top Model and right in between her chopping off them girls' hair and making them wear what the fuck she wanted to wear, Tyra decided to throw an R&B pop song in the air. Y'all remember, and it's time with good and nice show, yeah, and the scene won't possibly for me. And the vocals was everywhere, and I like Tyra. I like Tyra. I like to see Tyra on a runway, angel wings behind her back. I don't want to hear Tyra B on the motherfucking track. That's just me. That's just me. And we get in trouble for saying that sometimes you're only good at one thing. Now, I'm not saying that Tyra's not good at music. I'm just saying that that song didn't do it for me. That's how it was listening to That's So Raven, you know? It's one thing to love that 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 theme song. You can gaze into the future. But when I heard the R&B that Raven was singing, I was like, mm, mm, well, <laughs> well. <laughs> you like it. I don't, 
It's one thing for my playlist. You ever been ashamed of your playlist on the low because you know that it can go anywhere from DMX to Britney Spears? Back down to the baby, to young baby, to whose baby is it? Anyway, you know it can be all over the place. So every once in a while, my friends would get in my car and we'd be just listening to music, you know, on a road trip or wherever it may be. And, you know, Britney Spears would come on. I felt like I got to get out of this claim. I'm like, come on now. Don't act like y'all ain't fuck with Britney. Don't act like y'all didn't fuck with Britney. And then I look around and we all karaoke and Britney. I'm a slave. For you, I can give a disclaimer for Britney. I can't give a disclaimer for why Raven Simone's song popped up on my from the Disney playlist. They be like, "Darn, who the fuck is who is that?" We can't even karaoke to it, and this is no offense to Raven, but this has to do with everybody out there saying, with everyone out there saying, "Did you see this shit just pop? Up? What is this? Get that shit off my face! Who did that?" Get that shit off my face. Who sent me that? Oh, somebody sent 500. So, uh, thank you. But I didn't know that shit was going to pop up. That shit just scared me. I was like, what's going on here? But like I said, it has nothing to do with color. And I think that the more we bring color into everything, we will negate the fact that you didn't buy Raven's album either. Everybody want to sit there and act like Miley got the best end of the stick because she's a white girl at Disney. Or did Miley get the best end of the stick after Disney because she put out the best music? Let's not act like we won't all sing it. Yeah, yeah, it's a party in the USA. That's one of my go-to karaoke hits. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. Every once in a while, somebody will hit big. Drake. Drake came from Nick at Night's noggin with Degrassi. I didn't know Drake as a rapper. I do remember the first time I heard Drake, he had a song with Trey Songs. And the first thing I thought to myself was, ain't that that boy from Degrassi? Then he gets shot by Jimmy. And I used to watch Degrassi. Like, I was a fan. Like, Emma, Manuela. You know, I knew them by name. So I wasn't just, you know, I didn't just get on Degrassi after Drake became. No, I'm not one of them. I knew Degrassi. So... As I'm watching it one day and he pops up on my screen, I'm like, damn, that's the boy from Degrassi. Do you know what made me look at Drake outside of Degrassi? The talent spoke for itself. He was able to rap for me, put on for his city, and I didn't see him any longer as the boy in Degrassi. I started seeing him as a rapper. I never saw that with, you know, after Raven's acting, and that's okay. That just means she's such a good actress that we can't see her in other spaces. And she's not been the only artist, like I said before, who have came from that. But I always want to say, before I play the race card, I would like to thank Factually. Factually, Miley Cyrus had some hits. Drake had some hits. Everyone's Ariana Grande, another one from Nickelodeon. Ariana made us believe, Ariana not only made us believe she was an R&B vocalist or a pop vocalist, this bitch made us believe she was a black woman. I remember how Ariana looked at Nickelodeon. Last time I seen Ariana, Ariana had nice little tits, legs, bitch had a side ponytail with the door knockers on, lashes and a bonnet in one video with Nicki Minaj rapping the hook. I said, this bitch black. I just, it was crazy because I didn't even... It was so crazy that I didn't even know that that was Ariana from that damn TV show. If you want to make it in the music industry, i.e. I'm not in the music industry, but you've been seen in other spaces, you need to make us believe that you are what you say you are. It is hard to see you as Dr. Doolittle, Disney's little sister, that's so Raven, a girl who's gazing into the future at a classroom setting to now you and some Beyonce leotard shaking your ass on the beach. It takes steps to get to that. Even Molly can shake her ass on the beach in 2024, and we'd be like, look at Molly, right? Ratchet, ratchet. Because we don't see Miley anymore as Hannah Montana. That's just that. It's hard for certain people to cross over, even for a young child star to cross over into a grown-up. Um, and that's so crazy to even say that, but even like Lil Bow Wow. I was a Lil Bow Wow fan. I used to love like Mike. Um, Lil Bow Wow. You just, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I had his album with the Mickey Mouse chain. Yes, I was corny like that. But I'm not going to lie. Bow Wow music hit when I was growing up. Um... It's harder for us to take Bow Wow serious now because we've seen him as a child so long. Not everyone has that Beyonce, Michael Jackson, you know, Rihanna, people who enter Britney Spears, people who we see at 15, 16, hit me baby one more time to now I'm a slave for you. It's, 
You got to be able to turn that shit on and off because at the end of the day, once you are an adult and we're seeing you now as this next sex symbol or this heartthrob, we don't want to remember you as a child. And there's reasons why we don't want to remember you as a child. It's hard to take Bow Wow serious singing about eating some coochie. Because we'd be like, oh, I just cannot get the fact that you had a Mickey Mouse chain on and some Jordans. Now you eating a little twat. It's <laughs> crazy. And we still would call Bow Wow a child. We'd be like, boy, you crazy. I would call Bow Wow a boy while talking to him. And not because I'm disrespectful. It's just that when I remember, when I think of Bow Wow, I think of the Harlem Shake in a Mickey Mouse chain. I don't want to see him. You know, I don't want to see a flick with Bow Wow doing something nasty on Twitter. Because how did you go from this to that? It's a lot. So I just, yeah, it's hard for us to see past what you've been. Even sister, sister. Let's talk about T and Tamir. I'm a huge T and Tamir fan. I love the fact that now we can see them as individuals. A lot of us like to see them as one of them is black, the other one isn't. However, I look at them as just two twin girls, and we also like to confuse twins sometimes with being the same people. So I like the fact that we can see Tia now, but like, what's up, Tia? How your husband? How your kids? Everything going good with your situation? And see Tamara. BET noticed such a separation in Tia and Tamara that last year, no, it wasn't last year, it was the year before last, they, they wished to Tia a happy birthday and not Tamara. I said, well, <laughs> <laughs> now, that was hilarious because not even I'm bold enough to do that. Now, you don't just wish one twin at birthday, especially when we know they got a fucking twin. Now, you can do that with Tasha Smith because a long time we didn't know she had a twin sister. But you know T and Tamara, they come together like a, you know, like a Twix, a yeah, package deal. Um, but even now in their career, it took us a while to see them as grown women because at the sister sister, they still did a lot of Disney s child safe lifetime you know on the board cookie cutter like films like twitches and 17 again so we they kept making them play young girls because you know black don't crack so they still appeared 17 while in their early 30s they were good looking young girls and i'm pretty sure this was probably before they had, had their children so um it took us a while to accept that i didn't accept t and tamara as grown as women until i saw this show that aired on bet called the game where Tia was dating Derwin Davis and she was a sunbeam hanging out with Tasha and, and, and Kelly and, and they were all good friends. And then we saw Tia in these, you know, sex scenes, being cheated on, doing the cheating. We saw her sexy and we didn't see her with her sister. So that made us stop thinking of them as sister, sister. And that's actually Tia Maori. And I think that that's what you got to do. You have to learn to cut off whatever it was around you that we saw you like as a child so that we can actually view you as an adult. That's what Beyonce did with Destiny's Child. I don't want them to see me as a teeny bopper girl and matching, but none matching outfits singing no, no, no. I want them to see me shake this ass real quick. And now I can appreciate that ass shake even more because I'm not coming to the tour looking for her dressed in a girl group of all four. That's why we appreciate it. Um, and I think that would have happened more with Bow Wow. We had to see Bow Wow in some other lightings or we have to see Raven Simone in a different lighting. And even now with Raven as an older woman, and I don't count early 40s as older, she's not old, but she's still doing Disney-esque, you know, films. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Shit, they just did Cheetah Girls 17, and them cheetahs ain't even girls no fucking more. They're cheetah ladies now, okay? Them Shree LW ladies, and that, that these are grown-ass women. That girl who had the list, that girl done got just a thick, she can got ass on her. I so, said, oh, look at Cheetah Girls with her ass back there. And that's cool. When we remember Cheetah Girls, they were shaped like me. Four little girls, four little, you know, in little matching, but non-matching outfits, doing matching dancing routines. For us to see you differently, you have to do something differently. Maybe not drastically, but differently. That's all I'm saying. Back to this little beef that y'all created, because I felt like people were trying to create a beef between Raven and Miley. Raven don't got no reason to beef with Miley, no more than Miley got a reason to beef with Raven. Because if you ask me, when I think of Disney, I think of Raven Simone and Miley Cyrus. To me, they were at the top of Disney for spinoffs and TV shows that lasted so long. So, Or even Lindsay Lohan. Even Lindsay made us see her as not that little girl no more. Um, Lindsay started doing adult shit like shoplifting. 
I said, not Lindsay Lohan, that bitch is Lindsay Quick Hands, ain't she? Because they said she could steal your dreams while you were taking a nap. So I said, ooh, not Lindsay out here stealing. And Lindsay was stealing after, you know, that damn Mean Girl movie had spun off, did all these big box office hit, Mariah Carey featuring in and shit. Lindsay just was shoplifting because Lindsay liked to shoplift, okay? Lindsay is the reason why they taking self-checkout out of a lot of stores. Because when they say self-checkout, they don't mean self-walk the fuck out. Lindsay was taking people's shit. They said, Lindsay, have you opened up the jewelry case? You turn around and throw something in the trash. That bitch didn't heist it. I said, is that cat woman? Lindsay was stealing shit left and right. I said, Lindsay. But see, I think Lindsay, too, realized that she didn't want to be seen as that little girl in Parent Trap no more. She wanted to be seen as the girl that trapped the fucking parents. So, yeah, Lindsay was out here shoplifting so much, they trapped Lindsay, didn't they? I said, is that Lindsay in court? <laughs> now, that's what you call a real parent trap. You know, trapped hands behind them gates. Let Lindsay out. Now we see Lindsay as a whole damn adult. And I'm appreciative of that because Lindsay made us see that difference. She started hanging out with Britney Spears and Paris Hilton. They were getting fucked up. Like, what's Walmart? You remember Lindsay? Lindsay was out there shaking her ass in videos, twerking for thugs. I was like, okay. Not Lindsay over here off Dr. Martin Luther King ad. Popping pussy. But here's the thing. I'm a big Lindsay fan, but she made us believe differently. So when it comes to some of these beefs, I say all that to say this. Let's not create beefs between some of our favorite artists because... A lot of times they don't have the beef. I think it's what the internet creates for them. Like we've done with Erica Badu and Beyonce. Erica Badu and Beyonce should never even be. <laughs> they, <laughs> you know you done ran out of people to create beef with when you start putting neo soul artists against pop. <laughs> what? Because what next? Y'all going to have Tamala Man battling Sexy Red. And you be like, what do what? Do what? Do what? Not take me to the king versus my booty hole brown. What? It just, sometimes, because some of the beefs don't even be making sense. Be like, how y'all even know each other? I ain't never put Erica Badu. I ain't even never said they should do a song together. I've never, my playlist don't even go from Beyonce to Erica Badu. And believe it or not, both of them are on my playlist. But when I'm listening to Erica, I want to burn some candles, you know, light some incense, maybe even take out some tarot cards. And revoke a fucking spell if you are worried about me. I've been a who was. You know, you want to hold up your black power fist, don't shave under your arms, maybe dread the shit up. You know, wear a wife beater with kente colors on there. You know what I'm saying? Go in the store with the same head wrap wrapped around your baby because y'all are becoming one. You know, when, when you listen to Erica music, people approach you. They don't even say, damn, man, you got a fat ass. They be like, what up, sister? Can I get you something? Yeah, you look like you like earth tone green. You've been running through my mind all day. You know, that's the way you approach an Erica Badu. That's what I hear when I hear Erica. I hear, you know, grits in the morning with a little bacon to the side. You know what I'm saying? I think of a cool day. Blunts roll right. You know, not even blunts. Reefa. Erica smokes reefer. Yeah, when I listen to Beyonce, I think of back that ass up, shave my legs. Ain't no hair under my arms. Ain't no hair. Ain't nothing but blonde hair blowing in the fucking wind. You do your makeup to Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce teaches you how to walk in the club. You think about looking like Beyonce before you go out like I'm on my Beyonce shit tonight. You don't put bad bitch against Queen, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you approach Beyonce, you be like, damn, man, huh? you fitting them tights. When you approach Erica, you be like, what's up, my girl, my, my Nubian sister? I would like to take you out, read some poetry, care for some coffee. When you approach Beyonce, you be like, yo, shots on me, man. I got you at the bar, whatever the fuck you need. You know what I'm saying? With Erica, you ask, do you even curse? You know what I'm saying? It's a different, you want to take Beyonce out to a nightclub where y'all can, uh-oh, uh, -oh, uh -oh. You take Erica out to a snap and poetry and jam like my sister. You know, I want to see you in the night as the sun shines bright. You know, it's just, it's just. Y'all created a beef out of, out of steak. It's, it's just, it's just, because you didn't have to. You made beef out of pork. You didn't have to do that. And now it's to the point where, 
I'm looking at Erica's page, like wondering what she gonna say. You never think of Erica beefing with nobody. Beyonce never beefs with anyone. You know what's sad when we done ran out of beef. So all the rappers are done beefing and the comedians are done beefing. Y'all trying to make beef with neo soul artists. I'm like, come on now. And now the Beyonce and Erica is paying y'all no mind. You trying to make beef between two Disney actresses. What about let's not beef at all? What about everything is going good? We don't got to beef around here. But like, okay, Molly over there popping shit. Her and Hannah Montana. Let me go over here and see what Raven doing. Beyonce over there shaking her ass and her braids. Let me go over here and listen to Erica. It don't have to be beef. People are so unused to peace that you will create beef out of any fucking thing. But since the comedians ain't beefing on Club Shay Shay no more, let me wake it up over here on Disney. Let me dig up these men from Nickelodeon. We know y'all been touchy-feely. Then it's to the point where y'all want us to beef between Diddy and the man that's been exposed from Nickelodeon. Listen. Allegations is allegation. I don't care who did it first. I'm worried about who did it worse. I'm like, oh my God. They said you did this, but you did that. Both of you, okay? Let's get into that shit too. I'm talking about Diddy. I've been reading up on some of the allegations. Some of y'all make some of this shit up in y'all sleep, okay? Now y'all trying to bring your sons in. It said it nine, ten years ago, one of his sons had drugged a bitch and beat her up and forced her. Nine, ten years ago, that son that y'all were talking about was 14. Now, where did he get the drugs from? That's what, I mean, because sometimes I, re, I be reading this shit and be like, boy, this boy just turned 19, 20. He ain't old enough to be beating up bitches. And why... I, why didn't the parents, why did the parents just leave the little girl at the 14 year? <laughs> I'm reading some of the shit and it just wasn't making sense to me. Cause it's like once one story has already lit the light over the bridge, we try to make a light tunnel all through the night. You be like, what is going on here? I just saw an allegation on the son that would have marked the boy at 13 or 14. Now I'm thinking of whose other rich kids was partying at these rich kids. Because one thing I have noticed from a lot of these stories is that rich kids, rich kids go to school together. So that means Diddy children may go to school with Will Smith children who may go to school with, I don't know, J-Lo's kids. And the list goes on and on. Which one of these other rich kids had such low self-esteem that they went over to Diddy Kid house for a good ass whipping, a nighttime drugging and waking up to nothing? That seems scary because I don't blame the kids. I would blame the parents. Who the fuck was these children getting these quaaludes and preludes from? That would be my question. Okay, so when I read some of this stuff, y'all, I don't know whether to believe it or not. It just seemed like sometimes when it rains, it pours. When it's one story out on you, it will be 40 more. It also seems that when it is an attack on a person, that something else is coming. I think that all of this is going on with that Nickelodeon dude and this Diddy guy is to distract us from the fact that the election is coming up. And bitch, we need to be worried. Prepared. Not scared, but caution. We need to be worried about the state of mind that this country is in, not what going on in Diddy's extra guest room. Because I feel like this, you shouldn't have never went to that fucking room if you had to guess what Diddy was there to do. Now, when you have heard stories about people for years to come, when do you believe them? Okay, these some of these stories ain't new. I've been heard and seen some oldies, old videos on YouTube popping up with Diddy and friends like Meek Mill and Usher and shit like that. I never believed them. You want to know why I didn't believe these stories? Because sometimes there are a certain thing. Like, I've met guys who were very, very bromancy, if I can say it that way. It didn't deem them to be LGBT. It didn't deem them to be confused. It didn't deem them to just want to all sleep with men. Some men are just so comfortable with themselves that they don't mind. Hey, you my brother, let me show you some love. I don't think everyone is gay. And I don't know if that's a problem with me. I don't know if I'm the problem for nothing. But I don't believe that every man that is successful is gay no more than I believe that every man that's not successful is a bomb. I just don't believe like that. I believe what you do and your privacy is your business. But if Meek Mill ain't coming out telling us that Diddy did every, anything, who are we to speculate? That be the problem. Then 
we as people of color would say something like, well, you know, let our young men live, let them express themselves. But the moment that they do, the moment that they give each other a hug or show each other some love or go to a pool party and you see them in a position that may not sit well with you, they're automatically gay. Everything ain't gay, people. <clears throat> Everything ain't straight. I don't, I definitely don't want you to think that, okay? But everything ain't gay, okay? Sometimes people are just very fucking comfortable, okay? And I think that after you've got made so much money and you've done everything, this diddy done flew to the moon and back, been around the world and ah, yeah, yeah. Now it's time to show a little love. He got sons, okay? So I, and, and then when I was looking at that story, even when they raided his house, and I'm not a person who don't believe some of these, I don't know what to believe until they're proven true, but I don't want to put my opinions on the wrong place. But one thing I will say, if I was a person that was running a rank where it involved children, nine times out of ten, I wouldn't do it at the same house where my children live. That don't make sense. And I don't I don't like to think that these things don't happen. Don't quote Darren and say, Darren said it didn't happen. This is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when I think common sense, Diddy ain't no dummy, okay? He's not a dumb man. It takes a very smart man to make the money that Diddy have and a business-wise man. So when that comes, I don't think he's dumb. I also don't think that if... If I'm going to do anything illegal, I'm probably not going to do it around my children. If I was a dealer, I'm probably not going to sell my last little whatever if my kids lay at the house. Because it's an old saying, you don't shit where you lay. You get what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying things did or did not happen. I won't dare. But I do not think that I would have my children in the vicinity of where I'm bringing other children. As if my children are not their age and not going to want to play with them. Something just don't seem right. And I don't care how many houses I got in my room. I mean, rooms I got in my house. It, do, it just don't make sense. Especially when you're a billionaire like Diddy. I just feel like shit. You could have just rented the bottom floor of a hotel for all your little play. It just didn't seem right. However, um, I don't know. But I'm a person who like to use common sense. And that's just me commonly. You know? I've seen people who can hide racism when the daughter brings home a black boyfriend the whole time the family don't like it at all but they know how to hide it around certain people right so if you can cut on and cut off racism you damn sure can cut on and cut off a rank i just don't i just yeah that's just my personal opinion um but once again i wasn't there i say all that to say this where i will be though is in tampa florida on april the 7th tampa we've already surpassed like 140 some tickets but i know we can do way better than that because it's it too tampa april 7th live at funny bone okay if you don't want to come with your man come with somebody else's but i need to see y'all there april the 11th Ooh, cleveland y'all are going through the roof for ticket sales i got a feeling we're gonna sell it they're gonna give us another show cleveland y'all been there like y'all know i can't wait to see y'all april 11th live at funny bone april 14th kansas city missouri live at funny bone i know it's another date right in between that, that date that i just can't think i want to say it's hartford connecticut and that's April the 20 something as well. We just switched the date for Orlando, which was originally April 28th. We switched that to May 23rd. From April the 28th to May 23rd now is Orlando Funny Bone. I cannot wait to see all of y'all there. Orlando, if you've already bought tickets, those tickets will still count from what we were going to do on the 28th to the 23rd of May. We switched it to May so that my schedule won't be so heavy because I had to actually switch. It wasn't the comedy club. I am actually on set doing something else that day. So they double booked me. So we're going to switch that from April 28th to May 23rd. Live at Funny Bone for Orlando, Florida. I'm going to share all those ticket links up and down the timeline. Anyway, thank y'all for watching this live. I forgot what I even named it. What did I name this live again? Um... Y'all know what I named it. Anyway, all them dates up there. Uh, what's beef? Right. What's beef? That's exactly what the fuck I named it. And I named it that because I feel like beef is things that other people create that the two people who they want to bump heads didn't even know anything about. Now I'm talking about especially when it comes to industry beef. Thank you guys for all those stars that you did not have to send. I always tell my fans, do not send stars. Um, I love you guys for free. God bless you all. Thank y'all for watching this live. What's beef? And uh, yeah, I'm going to share all the ticket links up and down the timeline. Bye-bye.